Welcome to the Harris County Flood Control District's virtual community engagement meeting to discuss an important flood risk reduction project near the Highlands Reservoir. This virtual community meeting is being offered by the Flood Control District to share vital information with the community. My name is Shelter Brigham and I'm with the Flood Control District's communications team. I am joined tonight by a team of Flood Control District leadership and subject matter experts to ensure we continue to keep you up to date on these important flood mitigation projects in your community. And we're also joined by staff from area elected officials offices and community associations. We're glad to see the community so engaged in these projects and we look forward to continuing to share updates and keeping you all in the community involved. First, we'd like to begin tonight's meeting with remarks from Harris County Precinct 2 Commissioner Adrian Garcia. Thank you and good evening, everybody. I'm Adrian Garcia, your Harris County Commissioner of the phenomenal Precinct 2. Shadow, you're muted. Firstly, to get as many vaccines, boosters, and testing options out to our precinct as much as possible. And I'm going to start that message over to make sure we can get the commissioner's full message to you. Thank you, and good evening, everybody. I'm Adrian Garcia your Harris County Commissioner of the phenomenal Precinct 2. Thank you to the Flood Control District for hosting this meeting. And once again, Happy New Year to you and to your families. Now, before I begin with why we're here tonight, I want to send a sincere thank you to everyone for joining us for this important meeting. I hope you and your family are healthy and well. And I know that COVID is trying to start 2022 on the wrong foot. But with your help, we are not going to let that happen. That's why I am working tirelessly to get as many vaccines, boosters, and testing options out to our precinct as much as possible. And I want to be sure that everyone who wants one and needs one can get one. Please follow my office on all of our social media pages, including Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, because it is where we will post information for vaccines and testing sites that may be close to you and your community. I'm with you through this entire thing, and I want to make sure that we will not stop until we do all that is needed and wanted to get our neighbors through this pandemic, and that we're able to focus on the great things that lie ahead for 2022. Our goal is to focus on revitalization rather than gentrification, empowering communities and creating opportunities for our existing neighborhoods to be more resilient, inclusive, and thriving. With the right investments, resources, and infrastructure, commitment, and community involvement, we can all make progress and thrive. Harris County works best when all communities work together because we will thrive together. I'm proud to be from Precinct 2. I've lived here my entire life. And I want everyone to know this community is the greatest place to live, work, and play. This is one of many flood mitigation projects happening within Precinct 2 aimed at improving our drainage systems to help minimize the impact of major rain events, keeping you, your family, your property, and our community safe. We know that residents in this community experienced flooding during major rain events, like hurricanes, tropical storms, and even those random strong thunderstorms that seem to come at a moment's notice. This project is intended to help prevent a repeat of those flooding events. Quality infrastructure is not only my responsibility as a county commissioner, but is also one of my top priorities. This is why I've tasked my team with taking action, collaborating 
with other county departments and partners to find new ways to make progress in addressing our community's needs. Things that make a difference and make us better prepared to weather the next storm. I hope you continue to stay engaged in this process. It's important to remember that your voice, your experiences, and your opinions absolutely do matter. Again, we're thankful that you've joined us tonight. Please continue to be safe. And if you haven't already gotten your vaccine, please consider doing so. Have a great night. And thank you for that, Commissioner Garcia. We appreciate you joining us to kick off tonight's meeting. This virtual public meeting will begin with a presentation to share project updates including an overview of the flood risk reduction projects near the Highlands Reservoir, the project timeline, and next steps. The presentation will be followed by a virtual question and answer session with flood control district team members. Attendees will be able to submit comments and questions through the phone or, by, or on our website. And any comments not addressed during the Q&A session tonight will receive a response from the flood control district after the close of the comment period. Instructions on how you can participate in this virtual meeting are included on this slide. They're on the virtual meeting webpage, and they're also on the Flood Control District's website. And I will also share a reminder of these instructions when we get to the Q&A portion of tonight's meeting. We will now transition to Marcus Stuckett, Director of the Engineering Division with the Flood Control District. He's going to share more information about the Flood Control District and then more details about this project. Marcus, over to you. Thank you, Shelger, and a special thanks to each of you for joining us tonight. In this presentation, as Shelger mentioned, we'll give you a brief overview of this project. Uh, but before we get into some, of the, into some of the project specifics, we want to share some information about the Flood Control District. The Harris County Flood Control District, we are a special purpose district uh, created by Texas legislature in 1937. And we were created in response to devastating floods that hit the Houston area in 1929 and 1935. Flood Control District is governed by the Harris County Commissioner's Court and works closely with other entities within the region, such as Harris County Engineering Department and the City of Houston. The organization was created to serve as a local partner, to serve as a local partner to leverage federal funding for flood damage reduction projects. Our mission has expanded since our founding, leading to billions of dollars in federal, state, and locally funded infrastructure improvements in the ground. The mission of the Harris County Flood Control District is to provide flood damage reduction projects that work with appropriate regard for community and natural values. One of the most difficult challenges we face is constructing effective projects that are sensitive to community and natural values in highly urbanized areas. Harris County includes 23 main watersheds, totaling approximately 1,800 square miles and more than 2,500 linear miles of channel. 2,500 miles is approximately the distance from New York to California. A watershed is a geographical region of land that drains to a common channel or outlet. Each watershed has its own unique characteristics and needs. The project we're discussing tonight is in the Spring Gully and Goose Creek watershed, which is located in Eastern Harris County. Our area is flood prone. And here are some reasons why. We're prone to extreme rainfalls, including tropical storms and hurricanes. We have flat, slow draining topography, and we have clay soils that do not soak up ex excess rainfall as quickly. While the Flood Control District plays a critical role in flood risk reduction, we are one of several entities in, involved in these in efforts within our area. When rain falls on your roof, it flows through several jurisdictions such as streets and drains managed by the Harris County Engineering Department, a municipal utility district, or cities such as the city of Houston before it flows into the larger channel, creek, or bayou that the flood control district owns and maintains. This slide illustrates the various jurisdictions which sometimes we even share with other entities. Inside neighborhoods, as shown on the left side of the illustration, storm sewers and roadside ditches collect storm water and start the process of moving it away from streets and homes. 
Storm sewers and roadside ditches are the responsibility of the underlying municipality. The larger bayous and channels that take the collected stormwater and move it through our drainage system to the Galveston Bay are the responsibility of the flood control district. This is shown on the right side of the illustration. And in the middle is a stormwater detention basin, sometimes constructed, constructed by the flood control district. When storm sewers increase, this creates an increase in runoff. Since it is our policy to avoid impacts to all properties, detention basins help to safely take in and temporarily store excess stormwater during heavy rain events. Often, we partner with Harris County precincts, utility districts, and others to add recreational amenities such as trails to these basins and along our channels. On August 25, 2018, Harris County voters approved $2.5 billion for flood risk reduction projects. This vote followed a series of meetings across Harris County in each watershed, which resulted in a list of what is now 181 bond projects. As of August 25, 2021, every project included in the 2018 bond program has been initiated, including six projects in the Spring Gully and Goose Creek watershed. A total of more than $1.35 billion in partnership funding has been secured so far to stretch the 2018 bond program even farther. The actual timing of each individual project will depend on a variety of factors, including environmental permitting, right-of-way acquisition, and utility relocation, and in some cases, requirements of a particular grant. That said, project lists and project schedules are updated regularly on our website. While the bond was for $2.5 billion, the full cost of every bond project in the bond table is almost $5 billion. So we made it clear from the outset that we would need funding partners to fully construct the projects in the bond program. And as I mentioned, we've had some success so far having secured more than $1.35 billion in partner funds. This graphic illustrates the many sources of those partnerships, including federal, state, and local funding that the flood control district is working to secure for Harris County. Each agency has its own definition of eligible projects and its own requirements for local match funding. So the flood control district works diligently to match projects to the right partnership opportunity. I will now move into the part of the program that is specifically about the Spring Gully and Goose Creek watershed and the flood risk reduction project near the Highlands Reservoir. Located in East Harris County, the Spring Gully and Goose Creek watershed covers approximately 32 square miles and includes about 60 miles of open streams. Spring Gully flows south from the Highlands Reservoir area to Burnett Bay, which is adjacent to the Houston Ship Channel. Goose Creek flows south from the Highlands Reservoir area into Tabs Bayou, which is also adjacent to the Houston Ship Channel. Since this area, has historically seen lower levels of urbanization, it is considered environmentally sensitive. The Burnett Bay and Tabs Bay shorelines have been noted by the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department for their high environmental quality and habitat value. Throughout this presentation, I'll use terms like the 500 year and 10 year storms. So I'll go ahead and discuss what some of those mean. And I'll use the 500 year storm event as an example. When I say a 500 year storm event, I'm talking about a rainfall event that has a 0.2% chance of occurring in any given year. It's important to note that experiencing a 500 year event does not mean that we'd wait another 500 years to experience it again. Rather, it means that in any given year, we have a 0.2% chance of a 500 year event occurring. These frequencies are simply measures of expected probabilities of a specific rainfall event based on available historical data. So here I'll discuss our project life cycle. While every project or flood risk reduction project is unique, they all follow this common life cycle. Each project begins and ends 
with a common and predictable milestone along the way. Whether or not a project moves forward from one stage to the next and how quickly that process moves depends on many factors, including the availability of funding, shifting community priorities, and other circumstances that can change from year to year. As you can see in the project lifecycle graphic, we are nearing the end of the preliminary engineering stage for the project near the Highlands Reservoir. During this stage, engineering teams conduct an in-depth evaluation of the area, explore and develop possible flood risk reduction alternatives, determine any needed utility relocations, evaluate the need for wetland mitigation and environmental permitting, and refine the project cost estimates. All of this work ultimately leads to a preliminary engineering report or a PDR, which includes a recommended project and identifies any right of way we need to acquire to construct the project. Once we have this roadmap in hand, we can move forward with right of way acquisition and utility location, followed by the design stage. You can read more about each step of our project life cycle at hcfcd.org. The project we're discussing tonight is focused on reducing water surface elevations along tributary 0119-00-00 and 0200-00-00. This area is outlined in magenta on the map and is located adjacent to Highlands Reservoir and just south of Barbers Hill Road. For tonight's meeting, we refer to this area as the project limits and the tributaries as 0119 and 0200. We began a feasibility study in this area in 2017 when we kicked off an effort to analyze flooding risk and identify high level concepts to reduce those risks. That work led to a partnership with the San Jacinto River Authority, which owns and operates the Highlands Reservoir. We reported on the findings of our study during a bond project community engagement meeting held late last year. We're now wrapping up the preliminary engineering stage for this effort. The goal of this stage is to further refine the concepts from the feasibility study with the ultimate goal of improving channel conveyance and reducing water surface elevations in the area. The Flood Control District continues to work closely with the San Jacinto River Authority as the project will be located on their property. Additionally, the Harris County Engineering Department is working on a drainage improvement projects in the Highland Mobility States Reservoir, which, toward, which I'll discuss towards the end of the presentation. With multiple projects moving forward, we're coordinating closely with Harris County Engineering Team and to make sure we maximize the flood risk reduction benefits within this area. We had five key tasks for completing the preliminary engineering stage. First, we collect the latest data for the area. This included perform performing land survey and gathering information on proposed plans for other projects in the area. Second, we updated the existing conditions with the latest available data. Third, we performed an alternative analysis. This is where we developed and evaluated alternatives to lower the water surface elevations in both channels. Fourth, we analyzed the benefits of each of those alternatives and estimated the associated construction costs. And fifth, we made a recommendation for the optimal flood risk reduction project for this area which I will discuss tonight. This slide shows the existing conditions of two tributaries included in the evaluation. When we refer to channel capacity, we're talking about the amount of storm water a channel can carry before it overflows its banks. We estimated the existing channel capacity for the two channels to set a baseline for our efforts. Along Barbers Hills Road, tributary 0200 and part of tributary 0119 shown in yellow are shallow but wide. The channel capacity in this section ranges from a 50 year to a 100 year storm event. 
The remainder of tributary 0119 along Barbers Hills Road, shown in red, is narrow, but deepens further downstream. In this section, the channel has a capacity to carry a 100-year storm event. To objectively score the projects and determine the recommended alternative, we developed a performance metric. Each of these criteria impact how feasible the project is as they are determined, <clears throat> as they determine associated costs, timeline, and overall effectiveness of, of the effort. First, we looked at a number of potential utility conflicts, which can be incredibly costly and sometimes extremely complicated to relocate. Second, we analyzed the overall water surface reduction throughout the project limits, which gave us a sense of how effective a particular project would be. The third metric was overall cost to construct the alternative, including wetland mitigation. And finally, we considered the overall impacts to area wetlands, which often require permits that are costly and time sensitive, intensive. By weighing these criteria together, we developed our recommended alternative. So let's take a look at our evaluated alternatives. As a reminder, the overall project goal was to lower the water surface elevations in tributaries 0119 and 0200. Each of the alternatives considered different channel conveyance improvement configurations across both tributaries. The primary difference in each alternative is the location of the south side berm and the proposed channel width. The berm is an important consideration as it's traditionally used as a maintenance access point by the San Jacinto River Authority. Alternative one, shown on the left side of the screen, relocates the south berm in tributary 0200. This means this alternative also moves the segment of tributary 0119 approximately 100 feet south and improves the bank slopes for the east segment of tributary 0119. As an additional scenario to alternative one, we ran an alternative 1A, which is shown on the right. This alternative combines the berm located along the east segment of tributary 0119 into one maintenance berm, as opposed to two separate maintenance berms. Alternative two is very similar to alternative one. It retains the existing channel configuration in the eastern segment of tributary 0119. This alternative produced inconsistent elevations for the top of berms, which was not ideal for future access to the site. Alternative three proposes to move the south berm for both tributaries 100 feet to the south with deep bank slopes for the south bank. Alternative four included improvements to the channel bank slopes on the south bank of both tributaries and a combined maintenance berm for the flood control district and the San Jacinto River Authority. This alternative was found to have the lowest cost and the least impact to wetlands while still providing significant reduction in water surface elevations. Alternative five proposed to relocate the south berm for both tributaries by approximately 200 feet with deep bank slopes for the South Bank. Alternative five was estimated to be the most expensive of the alternatives and had the highest impact to area wetlands. Ultimately, we are recommending alternative four. This alternative will require us to obtain a, per a permit from the United States Army Corps of Engineers to mitigate approximately 2.7 acres of impacted wetlands. Additionally, when teams were in the field analyzing the project, they noted erosion issues at the eastern end of the project limits where tributary 0119 turned south. To mitigate this erosion, we also plan to move the existing channel slightly south, giving it a wide turning radius and improving flow. Our models show that alternative four will reduce, reduce water surface elevations in the tributary by just under a foot. It will also increase the channel capacity of tributary 0119 to accommodate a 500 year storm event within banks. 
while tributary O200 will now accommodate a 100-year storm event, event within banks. We expect the total cost to be approximately $6 million. Here, you can see the proposed layout for the channel conveyance improvements. The orange dotted lines on the two graphics at the top of this slide show the existing cross section for each of the tributaries with 0200 on the left and 0119 on the right. The red line in the same graphic shows the proposed cross section, which will be constructed as the project moves forward. The berms, which are flat areas on the right side of each image, are another important component of construction. They will be used for maintenance activities by the Flood Control District and the San Jacinto River Authority. Additionally, as part of this project, the Flood Control District is planning to repair a short segment of an existing roadside ditch on the far west side of our project limits. As you can see in the photo, this location is at Barbers Hill near Madeline Street. And as you can see from the photo on the left, the roadside ditch is in poor condition. The side slopes are deteriorate, deteriorating and leading to debris within the main ditch. Teams from the Flood Control District will reestablish the slope and remove debris from the ditch. We will then install riprap across the ditch. Riprap is rocks of broken pieces of concrete that are placed in areas where flow, storm water flow causes the erosion. The riprap serves as an armor for the channel preventing erosion. And due to space limitations, ditch widening or deepening is not recommended. As I mentioned earlier, there is another flood risk reduction project underway in the area. The Harris County Engineering Department is working to improve drainage in the Highland Mobile Estate subdivision. This project works in coordination with the flood control project I just discussed. The subdivision's drainage system includes roadside ditches with driveway culverts that flow to the roadside ditch along Barbers Hills Road. A subdivision drainage improvement study performed by the Harris County Engineering Department found that nearly all of these roadside ditches do not flow appropriately to the outfall on the south side of Barbers Hills Road. This creates ponding within the ditch because the water cannot flow properly. The study also found that many driveway culverts are undersized, which causes water to back up even more within the ditch. Finally, properties within the Barbers Hills within the area of Barbers Hills Road, Sralla Road, Loch Lomond Street, and Bramer Street are at a lower elevation, creating a bold effect. To reduce the risk of flooding by improving the subdivision drainage, the Harris County Engineering Department study recommended the following solutions. First, replace select driveway culverts with larger reinforced concrete pipes to increase capacity where needed. Second, increase the size of all culverts crossing Barbers Hills Road between Schroller Road and Bramer Street as increased capacity is needed throughout this particular area. Third, fill in any low points in the drainage ditch to reestablish positive drainage and counteract the bowl effect that I mentioned earlier. And fourth, mitigate the increase in water flow from the drainage improvements by constructing a stormwater detention basin to hold the extra stormwater until the risk of flooding has passed. The proposed site for the stormwater detention basin is shown in blue at the bottom of the image. Harris County Engineer, the Harris County Engineering Department team will begin construction on this project in April of 2022, and construction is expected to be fully complete by this summer. I will now turn the program back over to Sheldra to kick off the Q&A. Thank you so much, Marcus. A lot of great information. Before we move into the Q&A, I do want to share a quick reminder that we'd love to hear from you on this and other projects moving forward across Harris County. To learn more about this project, to ask questions, and to sign up for our mailing list, please visit hcfcd.org forward slash F109. If you have any questions specifically about the subdivision drainage improvement project, 
You can contact the Harris County Engineering Department at recovery at eng.hctx.net. As a reminder, there are three ways that you can submit a comment during tonight's session. You can submit a comment on this site in the box near the presentation live stream. You can submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website at hcfcd.org forward slash F109, or you can submit a comment via phone. That number is 855-925-2801. You'll want to utilize meeting code 4322. And if you are joining us via phone tonight, please press star to leave a message. Now, additionally, I do want to reiterate that any questions not addressed during the Q&A will receive a response from the Flood Control District following the close of the comment period. Information from this meeting and a recording of the live stream will be available on the Flood Control District's website, and that will also be available on our YouTube channel. Now, joining Marcus for our Q&A session tonight are Twana and Hani, who are overseeing project efforts for the Harris County Flood Control District, and Sanjay, who is leading the subdivision drainage improvement project efforts for the Harris County Engineering Department. And now it's time to take some of your questions. Our first question will be for Tawana. Tawana, what is the goal of this project? Good evening. The goal of this project is to lower the water surface elevation within tributaries 0119 dash 0000 and 0200 dash 0000 by providing a more effective stormwater outfall for drainage from the focus area. The project focuses on evaluating alternatives that utilize San Jacinto River Authority land within the Highlands Reservoir to add, to add storage volume and increase channel conveyance capacity. Thank you, Tawana. Next question will be for Hani. Hani, what is the exact area of this project? Yes, thank you for this question. The tributary 0119 and 0200 are located near the Highland Reservoir within the Spring Gully and Goose Creek Watershed. The recommended project is located just south of the Highland Mobile Estates neighborhood along Barber Hills Road. Thank you so much for that. Next question is for Marcus. Is flood control coordinating with anyone on this project? Yes, and uh, so we have two uh, partners that we're coordinating with on this project. Uh, one is going to be the San Jacinto River Authority. Uh, they own the property in, in which we are doing our widening for the 0119 and 0200 tip tributaries. And our other partner is our sister agency, the Harris County Engineering Department, who uh, they're doing a project in the, uh, the, sub the area just to the north of this to do some improvements to the ditches and to the uh, driveway code, which to increase the capacity uh, of those ditches within that neighborhood. And so, those neighborhood drain into the area that we're actually improving to uh, give them a little bit better conveyance. And then they're also installing some additional detention volume within that same area. Thank you, Marcus. Our next question is for Hani. What is the difference between alternative one and alternative one A? That's a good question. Yeah, the, the main difference between alternative one and one A is uh, an alternative one A uh, as shown in the presentation, it's constructing uh, like one combined uh, maintenance firm for the flood control districts and the San Jacinto River, uh, River authorities on the east segment of the tributary 0190. Thank you, Hani. Next question is for Tawana. What is the current stage of the project? The project is currently finishing up the preliminary engineering stage. And during this stage, flood control district uh, en engineers and environmental specialists develop and evaluate possible alternatives, uh, prepare, and prepare a project development and preliminary engineering report that includes project recommendations, 
bed meat flood damage reduction goals. This report identifies any needed right of way as well as determines utility relocation and develops a preliminary cost estimate for project construction. Thank you, Tawana. Uh, next question will be for Sanjay. Uh, with regard to Highlands, Highland Mobile Estates, how did Harris County Engineering come up with uh, a solution for this? Thank you for the question. Uh, during the analysis stage of the project, Harris County Engineering identified that there was not enough conveyance for the rainfall along the ditches. And as Marcus had pointed out, the culverts at those driveways were undersized. So uh, in addition to that, the bowl effect that Marcus talked about, we needed to improve drainage conditions so we could convey more of the stormwater across Barbers Hill to the south and into the channel so that the subdivision could benefit from uh, the increased drainage conveyance. Uh, the modeling exercise indicated the regrading of ditches that we needed to do, and also the size of the driveway culverts, as well as the six sets of six by three uh, concrete boxes that will go underneath Barbers Hill, take the drainage from the subdivision into the channel so that there is no risk to the uh, homeowners within the subdivision. Thank you for that, Sanjay. I do want to remind folks um, on how you can participate in tonight's meeting. You can submit a comment on this site and in the box near the presentation live stream. You can also submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website, and that address is hcfcd.org forward slash F09. And you can also call in, and that number is 855 925 2801. If you do call in, you'll want to utilize the meeting code 4322. And then if you are joining us by phone tonight, you'll press star and leave a message. Um, and I want to remind you that questions that we are not able to get to tonight, we will follow up with you following the close of the comment period. So make sure you get those questions into us. Let's see. Our next question will be for Marcus. And Marcus, who is responsible? for the drainage from the roadside ditches? Um, actually, that's a good question. And I had a slide that I presented on that showed some of the responsibilities. So if we can go to that one, I can talk from there. All right, there we go. So the, the roadside ditches and, and storm sewers, all of those type of structures that go in and out of a neighborhood, those are typically the responsibilities of a, a city or a, a MUD or municipal utility district. Uh, the, they typically go out and, you know, whenever there's an issue with a clogging or of a ditch or uh, there's too much debris within the pipes and they aren't flowing property, they go out to maintain those. Whereas with the flood control district, we maintain everything uh, that would be on the right side of this graphic that you're looking at now. And what we typically say our, our right of way, or what we consider flood controls right of way, would be what we consider top of bank to top of bank. So when I say top of bank, I'm talking about the location at which the channel starts to go down towards the water. So we have top of bank to top of bank on either side plus an additional, typically it's about 30 feet is what we like to have on either side. And that typically goes into the right of way that flood control maintains. And, and just to go a little bit deeper into this graphic, this, this shared jurisdiction area, which is where detention basin is at, uh, sometimes that's maintained by flood control because we uh, sometimes we'll take over the maintenance of it um, if it's designed to our standards and Another way we partner or share jurisdiction is because we allow others to fund amenities within these ponds with things like on, on this graphic I see here, a, a soccer field, there's some trails and, and parks. So uh, that, that's sort of a general overview of, of the maintenance responsibilities within, the, within a Harris County drainage system. Thank you, Marcus. Next question is for Hani. Who is supposed to benefit from this project once it's constructed? 
Yes, uh, this project is intended to primarily benefit the homes in the neighborhood located across from the Highland Reservoir of Barbers Hill Road. Thank you. And Tawana, I think we might have touched on this, but what's the current stage of this project? The current stage of this project is the preliminary engineering stage. We're in the process of wrapping that stage up. Yeah. All right. Next question, Marcus. What is a berm? And, and I, I think I, I talked so much that I kind of answered that question on the last one, but let's okay. let's go back. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Let's let's go back to that one to this this previous slide I was talking from. It's a good it's a good graphic. It's, I like this one a lot. So so a a a berm can can have two different meanings. It depends on if you're talking about a maintenance berm or if you're talking about a berm like what you would see on the uh, the Highlands Reservoir. Um, it, it's typically an, an area that's, for the purposes of this graphic, the berm is the area that we use to access uh, purely for maintenance purposes so that we can get to the channel, you know, um, de-snag or do repairs along the channel without, uh, what do we call it, encroaching on, on other people's property. So the berm, in the case of this illustration, are both sides of the channel for flood control, typically 30 feet on either side. Um, but a berm, it could also be, as I mentioned, a raised area that's intended to, to retain water within a reservoir. Um, in this case, for this project, it's actually both. It's used to hold back water, hold water within the reservoir, but also used as maintenance access for the projects that we're gonna uh, do along 0119 and 0200. Thank you, Marcus. I liked hearing it for the second time too, for sure. Our next question will be for Sanjay. Um, when will construction start on the subdivision drainage improvement project? The Harris County Engineering Department has a construction contractor on board and we anticipate construction to begin somewhere around April of this year and will last somewhere between four and six months. Thank you. Next question is for Hani. Why does this area flood? Yeah, this is a good question. Uh, the project area has a history of repetitive uh, flooding, where flooding began in more frequent storm event as low as the 10 years or the 10% storm event. The terrain in the focus area is uh, such that drainage flowing to the south toward Barbers Hill Road could not cross under the road effectively, causing storm water to pool in the southern uh, portion of the focused area. Good deal, thank you. Tawana, is this project fully funded? The tributary, excuse me, is the project fully funded? Uh, Yes, the project will be fully funded with 2018 bond funds. Okay, thank you, Tawana. Let's go to our next question here. Uh, Marcus, if you are improving flooding in this area, are you just flooding another area as a result? Marcus, you're muted. I am muted, thank, thank you, Sheldon. Uh, so the flood control district, we, we have a, a, what we call a no adverse impact uh, policy. And so on all of our projects, we have the engineers uh, make sure that any part of the project that they're doing will not increase the flooding or transfer the risk of flooding onto, onto others. So even when you consider uh, new development within Harris County, they they also have to follow those same strict requirements for for detention or some type of way to show that the work that they're doing is not transferring the risk to others, typically downstream. Uh, that criteria has been in place for 30 years, and 
Um, it's required for any development within the county. So flood control has to hold to those same standards. And it re just requires that, that all projects that are done within the county uh, mitigate whatever impact uh, their project creates. Thank you, Marcus. Did have one question coming in um, asking, how can I share this information with my neighbor? She could not attend tonight, could not attend. Um, the materials, the presentation materials will be available on our website, hcfcd.org uh, forward slash F09. We'll also uh, put a copy of the live stream on our YouTube channel. So um, at any point after the meeting, you're able to go and um, access those materials and um, also access the video on our YouTube channel, the live stream video, there, there will be a copy of that available as well. So our next question is for Tawana, where are the Spring Gully and Goose Creek watersheds located? Okay. We'll come back to Tawana with that question and we will skip down to get some more of your questions answered. We'll go to Sanjay. How is the subdivision drainage improvement project funded? This is a partnership project with the Harris County Flood Control District and it is funded by the 2018 bond program as well. Thank you for that. Marcus, earlier you mentioned um, Harris County has 23 watersheds, um, but I remember it was 22 watersheds. What's changed with that? Ah, uh, yes. So uh, it, it's it was 22 watersheds, and that's actually a, a really good observation. Uh, we the district decided that um, the area in the Greens Bayou area, so it's shown here in the, like the dark green. Yes, thank you for that. Uh, the area in the dark green, it, that used to be one area because it's it's a P, it was a, a P, had a P designation. And, and what that means is every uh, watershed within Harris County, um, in order to try to keep track of, of where different channels uh, drain to, uh, we set up a, a numbering system, a letter and number system. So you, you heard me at the beginning of the presentation, I said 0119-00-00 that sort of the way we designate where these different streams are. Well, the, the Greens Bayou watershed was such a large watershed that when we started to uh, break out the P101 and we just sequentially go up with every, every channel that we identified, we determined that Halls Bayou was a large enough watershed to be pulled out of the Greens Bayou watershed and become its own watershed. And, and that's how we actually ended up with, with 23. Thank you for that, Marcus. So we have Tawana back. Tawana, you mentioned um, five alternatives. Can you tell us why some of those alternatives weren't chosen? Tawana, you're muted. Just a second. Okay. Okay. Tawana, while you're working on that, honey, is that a question that you can take? Yes, sure. Uh, so we we already go through uh, analyzing the five alternative. We we objectively score them and we develop a, a performance metric. We already have uh, that uh, presented in slide number uh, twenty. The the five criteria that we already uh, evaluating the different alternative for for the project, like the number of the potential utility conflicts and the analysis of the overall water service reduction, overall cost to to the construction and the overall impacts to area wetlands. So based uh, by weighting these criteria together, we develop our recommended old, uh, alternative for this project. Thank you, Hani. Thank you. Sanjay, let's go back to you. Um, what is the benefit of the Harris County Engineering Department's project? 
The benefit of the Harris County Engineering Department's project is to improve drainage within the subdivision and making sure we increase the conveyance capacity from the subdivision across Barbers Hill Road and into the channel. Of course, the full benefit of the subdivision improvements project will be fully recognized only upon completion of the detention pond to the south side of Barbers Hill and the channel improvements project. Thank you for that. Marcus, how does everyone work together? Flood control, HCED, and SJRA? Yeah, so uh, in, in terms of this project specifically, uh, with let's, I'll start with Harris County Engineering. So the Harris County Engineering project, when, when they go in and you know do their ditch improvements, increase the size of their uh, driveway culverts, uh, they have to put it somewhere. And so one thing that we've done is we've allowed by widening the channel, we've given them a little bit more conveyance within 0119 and 0200 to, uh, to mitigate or to have a more drainage area to, to drain, not drainage area, drainage channel to drain into that's bigger than what's there currently. Um, also, if had we not widened the channel, they would have likely had to build a larger detention basin. So that's the connection between Harris County Engineering and, and flood control working together. Now, in terms of SJRA, the way we're working together is the uh, San Jacinto River Authority uh, uh, allowing us to use um, some of their, their property to expand this area that also allows us to be able to give some benefit to the Highland Mobile Estates project uh, that's again just to the north of Barbers Hills Road there. So they all kind of tie together where SJRA becomes a, a partner by allowing us to have some additional right of way to expand our facilities and by the expansion, by us having the expansion of our facilities, it allows the Harris County Engineering Department to be able to do their project improvements. Thank you, Marcus. We'll go over to Tawana. Is there an overall watershed plan for this uh, watershed? If so, is it on the website? Yes, there is a watershed plan and it is on the website. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, next question will be for Hani. Are there going to be hike and bike trails or anything like that constructed as part of this project? Yes, the, uh, the flood control district always welcomes, uh, uh, does not, uh, sorry, the flood control district does not construct recreation amenities, but welcomes partnership with other entities to construct these amenities. We support the multi use of our facility for, for recreation and open space as long as, this is, as there is a financial partner to build and maintain those amenities and this, those activities does not interfere with the property, uh, with the property primary flood uh, risk re reduction purposes. Thank you, Hani. Next question will be for Sanjay. Uh, how much does the subdivision drainage improvement project cost? The subdivision drainage improvement project uh, north of Barbers Hill and the conveyance across Barbers Hill is expected to cost just a little over a million dollars. That is the project that will begin construction in April of 2022. The detention pond portion of the project, which will be south of Barbers Hill, is expected to cost about $600,000 with uh, a pro full estimate available upon uh, knowing from the Army Corps of Engineers on the wetlands mitigation component of that project. Thank you for that, Sanjay. Next question is for Tawana. And now that an al a, the preferred alternative has been selected, what happens next? What happens next is we will wrap up the preliminary engineering stage. After we receive comments from the public, we definitely look forward to your input. And then we will uh, present the preliminary engineering report to Harris County Commissioner's Court for our acceptance. And from there, we will move into the design phase of the project. Thank you, Tawana. Marcus, will this project eliminate flooding altogether? 
Uh, thanks for that question. And I like it. And sometimes I feel like people are following me around in these meetings asking me that question. But uh, so so we, we as we're called the, the Harris County Flood Control District. And it's important that, you know, no one can control floods. But so it, we, we never say that uh, a project is going to eliminate flooding. You know, we can't we can't control nature. However, what we do stand by is that there will be a flood damage reduction benefit to every project that we move forward with and, and place into the ground. So we never say we will eliminate flooding, but we definitely can say we will reduce risk of flooding. Good answer. Thank you, Marcus. Connie, back over to you. How long will it take to construct this project? At this time, it's too early to know uh, the construction plan or timing for this project. Okay, thank you for that. Sanjay, who do I contact if I have more questions on the subdivision drainage improvement project? Multiple ways to do this. You could send questions to the information that uh, Shelva just shared with all of y'all. And that will then be forwarded to us for us to respond to. Uh, I believe that is the best way of uh, getting information on this project. Thank you for that. Uh, we have a couple of more minutes, but did want to remind folks how they can submit a comment. A couple of ways you can do that. You can do so on this site in the box near the presentation live stream. You can do so on our website hcfcd.org forward slash F109. And you can also read more about this project on that page. Or you can submit a comment by giving us a call. That's 855-925-2801. You'll utilize the meeting code 4322. And then you'll just press star to leave us a message. See, we have a couple of more questions before we wrap up this evening. Well, this is a big question, Marcus. What is the uh, 2018 bond program? <laughs> Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, I, I've, I've heard of it. Yes, it sounds extremely familiar. So, you know, we're all aware, you know, in August of 2017, we had Hurricane Harvey. So uh, at the time, the Harris County Commissioner's Court uh, decided to do a, a bond uh, for the Harris County voters to vote on. And uh, the Harris County voters uh, approved that bond. We had, uh, as a part of that approval of that bond, uh, we had held several meetings across Harris County where we allowed, um, or where, where the, the public in general were allowed to come to these meetings and tell us you know, where their problems are to help us develop uh, this list of projects, which here we 181 projects including actually the, the subdivision drainage projects that, that Sanjay is here discussing today. Um, that bond was for $2.5 billion, but the total of the bond was, was $5 billion for all of the projects within that. And that was because we expected to have some partnership funding come uh, be a part of, of the program. So it's, it's uh, to shorten it more, it, it's a it's a program by which the flood control district, along with the help of the uh, residents of Harris County, developed to try to uh, get get some get a get a hold of the flooding situation that we have within Harris County. Thank you for that, Marcus. Had one. Let's see. Mm -hmm. One viewer was asking, how can I learn more about one of the other projects going on in the Spring Gully and Goose Creek watershed? Um, you can do that by visiting our website, hcfcd.org slash Spring Gully, and then you'll select uh, the project of interest from a list. It'll be on the left side of the webpage. There is also a submit a comment button for any questions or comments that you have. You would put it in on that page, and then one of our uh, fantastic and very knowledgeable communication project specialist will reach back out to you and try to get that information for you and get your questions answered. And we do appreciate um, everyone for tuning in tonight and giving us your questions and comments. We're coming to the close of our meeting. 
Um, I do want to share one final reminder that we're continuing to accept comments and feedback on this project through February 11th. Um, we also encourage everyone to get flood insurance as we know that flood season in Harris County is year round. Thanks to Marcus, Tawana, Hani, and Sanjay for um, being with us and getting all of your questions answered. Thank you again for joining us this evening and for all of your engagement in this project. We look forward to continuing to share updates as our work moves forward. Stay safe and have a great evening.